Good morning, Colts Nation. Welcome back to another episode of the Forged in Blue podcast presented by Colts Brawl and the Brawl Network. I'm your host, Stephen Burton, joined as always by my co-host, Rashad. And on today's episode, Rashad, I, I, I can't sing, but I'm going to, you know, I'm coming home. <laughs> T.Y. is home. We're going to recap yes, that real quick. We're going to touch on it because we didn't get to talk about it last week because it hadn't happened as of the recording. We're going to also do a little different. We put it out there on social media today. We wanted to get your guys' feedback. We talked last week a little bit about given our rankings. Y'all responded overwhelmingly for <laughs> edge rusher. So we're going to give you guys, we're going to be different though. Not top five. We'll give you guys top three. We're both going to do it. So we're going to give you guys our top three. And then as always, come on over, put the soft music on to the Forged in Blue couch for social media sessions. As always, you guys, we ask you guys to please, please, please rate, review, subscribe, and share. It's not hard. Hit the three buttons at the top, pound that, smash it out, share it with everybody. Also hit the pink, purple, whatever color you have on your phone, hit the subscribe button, leave us a review, hit it with the rating. We love the five stars. So without further ado, let's fire it up, jump on in. So like I said, Rashad, he's home, man. He is home. We want, we want to touch on the TY thing. So obviously like, it was viral. I mean, you're talking what 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 did it end up being, Sean? What what did it end up in the uh, rankings? It was seventh in the world in, in <sighs> trending. Y'all, y'all don't realize, man. Like it's tiny Indianapolis. Like we don't we don't right. trend. And it went trending and held for what for almost 24 hours. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, and the coolest thing we joked last week, you know, is ghost sighting. If y'all are watching on YouTube, ghost sighting. Every time he commented, and he so after he signed, he was on Pat McAfee, and I was listening to the radio today, and they were talking about that interview, and they were like, "Man, he was so open, more open than he's ever been," and it's probably because Pat brings that out in people, but he was very open that man, he was engaged, he listened to everything, he read everything, he was so engaged with that Ty bring Ty home. And I mean, that's a huge shout out, but obviously he's home. I want to get, we want to share our thoughts. So I want to get Rashad's thoughts on him, the deal, what we're looking at and, and kind of just the overall feeling about it. It's a lot to unpack, actually, you know, with that TY situation, especially that Pat McAfee interview that you're referring to. I mean, the big thing that came out of that interview is that TY passed up the deal with Baltimore and he was five seconds away from signing, mm -hmm. which he said would, would have been more guaranteed money than his whole one year, $10 million deal with the coach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He spoke about being so close to signing with Baltimore that had Jim Ursay not picked up the phone and intervened, then he would be a Baltimore Raven right now. Oh. That. <sighs> That doesn't sit well, especially, you know, Ballard had his number that I'm sure was was given to T.Y. well before free agency even started. T.Y. had his own particular number that he felt like he deserved. So they couldn't meet, man. They couldn't come to an agreement. I'm sure it was a couple million, you know, away. Mm -hmm. Ballard's firm and standing on what he feels. And then wouldn't you like looked, to know what that number Ballard gave was? Like how much sweetener? You know, we all know Jim Mercy said it, tossing the little sweetener. How much sweetener do you think he had to toss in there? Like I'd love to know what Ballard really thought and what that number really – we'll never know. I mean, hell, he's no, never going to say. No, you know, Ballard doesn't say anything. But – I would, I would love to know what the sweetener really was, what Ursay did. Or, like, can't you just see him, like, hopping on his cell phone and texting Ballard and be like, I got this. Yeah, <laughs> let, me, let, let me handle this. You know, T.Y. has been, been with us 10, 10, I say 10 million, had almost 10 years now. And, you know, you're not going to let a couple million dollars run one of the guys that's been your franchise cornerstone, one of your franchise pillars. And it probably was around one year, $7 million. Mm -hmm. If I had to guess a number from Ballard, and it may have been about $3 million difference, and Ursay just felt like that was too minuscule yeah. to, you know, let T.Y. walk out of here, especially when we have such a gaping hole 
at wide receiver and was entertaining the thought of signing Sammy Watkins, who was in for a visit that day. Which I I wouldn't, you know, we talked about it last time. I'm not opposed to Sammy Watkins. I mean, Mm -hmm. he's gone. He's off the market. I think the other cool thing you were mentioning in the Pat interview too is the eyeballs. All Colts Nation and all Colts Twitter went berserk about these eyeballs that he put out on there. It wasn't as pertained to the Colts. No. It was him literally saying, oh, shit, I'm going to have to sign with the Ravens. Yeah. I mean, uh, I thought that. And then just the fact, like, I want to get to the, you know, obviously every podcaster wants to get to the level of Pat McAfee, but the ability for him to kind of nudge a little and T.Y. actually give the team, like give yeah. the other team who was offering him a contract. Like he was like, no, I know it's Baltimore. I mean, like he, he got it out of him, which is just crazy to me that he, that T.Y. would say it, but can we touch on that too? I want to touch, I want, I want to get your opinion. That is, so Sammy Watkins signs, right? Mm-hmm. I'm trying to remember who who else took a visit to Baltimore. Did Kenny Galladay, or did he go Giants and then he just stayed there? He went Giants. I think he stayed there. But Juju passed up more. Juju money. passed up more money, more than likely. So you had Ty mm-hmm. and you let's just go Ty and Juju, mm-hmm. two premier wide receivers. Sammy took passed, a visit there too. Sammy took, took a visit. Yeah, Sammy did too. But two premier wide receivers who. Yeah kind of were like, yeah, thanks, but no thanks, not wanting to play with Lamar. Uh, I mean, I know, like, we always joke, like, this isn't, like, this is a Colts podcast, like, but it's interesting. Like, it's interesting to me that, and we talked last week, me and you did, about Sammy's really similar to me as as Hollywood Brown. So that's interesting for me to see how that develops. But nonetheless, T.Y. is home, you know, the songs, the ghost watch, you know, it's <laughs> it was it was such a cool experience. And I mean, to gain the traction that it did, it made the news in Indy. Pat McAfee talked about it. T.Y. talked about the fact that yeah. he saw this like it was it's so cool. And it was so cool to be part of it, you know, just in that way. And seeing that it had an actual influence on the overall situation, like you don't really think as a fan on social media, you have an influence but damn, like you really did on this one. Like he felt the love, man. He felt and, the love. And you know what's the most interesting part about it all? It's a one year deal. We're going to have to do it again next year. I know, man. I thought about <laughs> that. I was thinking about that. And they were talking about that. I'm li- I was listening to Kevin Bowen today. And y'all know, everyone who listens to this knows I love Kevin Bowen. We're going to have him Me on too. again soon. Me too. And he was talking about it. And he was like, man, you know, TY said he was going to, this was his last contract. Now, this probably changes it. And then you have the, what 10 year 100 billion dollar contract that's coming into place with the network so the yeah. the cap's going to just i mean skyrocket up so i mean he's going to get another bite up at the end the interesting part's going to be he's another year older i think he's going to have a great year michael was talking on twitter today like over under touchdown passes for carson to ty who's ready to see it i think he's going to have a big year i think so because i think that deep ball is going to be back and oh, and, and one one thing, not to cut your wisdom. No, no, go uh, ahead, man. One thing I wanted to mention was that eight million of that is guaranteed. The other two millions can be reached in, through incentives. Uh, he got oh, one incentive at six hundred yards, another incentive at seven hundred yards, and the last incentive is at nine hundred yards. That's for one of the million, and the other incentives is I think. I think it's touchdowns, if I'm not mistaken. No, it's catches. It's catches. 50 catches, 250K, uh, 60 catches for another 250, 70, and 80 to get the full other million. And that's how he gets to 10. So eight, basically 80 catches, 900 yards, gets him his full 10, 10 million. I love the fact that the first, the first milestone is 600 yards because for those who listen, and we talked about it, and, <laughs> and Derek Good talked point. about it, the 600-yard mark, Puts him at 10,000 career yards. And then the Colts at that point become the only franchise in NFL history with not one, not two, but three wide receivers with 10,000 career receiving yards for one team. Like that was something me and you talked about prior to him coming back that swayed me to wanting him back. Um, I mean, what can you say, man? You, you, there's only, you can see, we can have an entire podcast talking about T.Y. and the saga that was bring T.Y. home and, right. and just everything in general. But it was just 
you know, and that shows right there. It's the power of Colts Nation. Like, it's what gets the podcast, this podcast kind of up and moving. It's what gets Colts Brawl up and moving. It's what brings the juice. It's why we all do it. It's why we're engaged, why we're inside yes, the elite chatting everywhere. You know, it's 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 Colts Nation. So, I mean, we wanted to touch on that. If you guys are watching on YouTube, too, I want I want to do this. If you look closely, I, I am, I, you know, fair, we, we talked last week. I'm holding it up. You can see it if you're on YouTube. I give a shout out to Jacoby Brissett. We gave that last week. And I told you guys, and y'all saw it on Twitter too. I am all about, where's it at? There it is. Carson Wentz. Hey. He is super pumped. That For those who don't know, that's AO1. That's his foundation. Rashad doesn't know. I'm actually working to see if someone maybe from the foundation might be willing to come on for a few minutes in the mm. future and just kind of talk about it. So Colts fans can kind of see what it's about. That would be um, awesome. They're not real big on because they I think they think a lot of times people are trying to get to Carson. So yeah. um yeah. so before we go to the edge rush, that's something else I want to touch on. How horrible a teammate is he? What do you think? Oh man, he's he's, he's sick, right? Oh, he's sick. He's posting, monster. Video, posting videos, cutting his grass, you know, in his oh. tractor. I mean calling out Buckner to come and box with him. The nerve of him, right? The I mean, and I'm pretty sure, I don't know if you saw, people are digging in a little bit with this is that, you know, Pascal said that he had, he was like first throwing session, check. He's not technically re-signed yet. <laughs> and I think he's thrown with Carson. I think Carson, and then, you know, T.Y. is going to get with him really quickly, I think, if he already has him. Yeah, he said he is. He said he's looking forward to him. T.Y. actually said in that Pat McAfee interview that he talked to Tory Smith who actually mm-hmm. played with Carson Wentz and Torrey Smith had nothing but great things to say about him, which is interesting because Torrey Smith, he, he played with Carson Wentz when he was on the older side of his career and he mm-hmm. was a deep ball threat throughout yeah. his career. Similar to what T.Y. is, older guy, deep ball guy, and T.Y. doing his due diligence, man. And, yeah. I, and I think that's so important. And T.Y. spoke about how Carson has been texting him and checking on throughout him throughout the, the process. So I, I think that's that. Awesome. How close are we? Are we almost done? What's the mm-hmm. number look like? Where are we at? Like he wanted him back so bad. So I love that. I just had to touch on that because but he's like, terrible though. He's terrible, like, Stephen. The terrible. worst part is that and this is the only thing, you know, we ever, every once in a while we get on our soapboxes. And <laughs> this is nowhere to that extent. Right. But it's kind of like, man, the one thing I'm going to hate is ball out or not. If we put, if Forged in Blue posts anything, Colts brawl, Colts media in general, Mm-hmm. It's going to be the timeline and the comments are going to be filled with Philadelphia Eagles fans that are just oh, yeah. bitter. I oh, mean, yeah. just bitter. You're ready just, for it. It's just, it's annoying. You know, You're I just get tired it, of seeing it. It's not fun to be that negative. So, all right. So let's, let's, let's give the people what they want, man. So we did a poll, like we said, and we did, I gave you guys three options and, and, Wide receiver, edge rush, and I'm trying to remember what the third one was. What was it? It was corner. Yeah. And, man, I'm not going to lie. I told Rashad before we started recording, I really wanted wide receiver because it's so deep. And edge edge is, edge is yeah. not as deep, you know. Yeah. And it's going to be – you know, it's going to – our list are probably going to be somewhat similar. We'll see. I know someone he really likes that I'm not super high on, so that's going to be fun. Um but so let's let's jump it off, man. Who is let's go? Let's start with yours. Let's start with we're, your number. We're going, three. we're going three, right? Okay. Yeah, let's three, go three, two, one. one. Let's go down. Let's let's give the people what they want, man. Okay. My number three guy, maybe you're a little bit high on him. Uh he had us he had his pro day yesterday. He was absolutely phenomenal at his pro day. Ran a lights out 40, great vertical, uh six foot five, 266 pounds in um 2020. At 15 and a half tackle for losses and eight sacks. It is Jill. Like Phillips. teasing. It's like dropping breadcrumbs yeah, right now. You're just yeah, giving them stats. Oh. Jalen Phillips, man, from the University of Miami. A real, really good kid. You know, mm-hmm. he, he he's really explosive, gets off the ball. He pursues really well. There's one reason he's number three on my list. Ooh, I wonder if you have the same. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna piggyback. I'm not gonna go into my. He is my number three, and I'm wondering if it's for the same reason. At the end of the 2018 season, he retired from football mm-hmm. due to concussions. Yeah, and 
I'm sorry, but those type of things doesn't just go away. I mean, I'm sure coach fans remember Austin Kylie. Oh, you know, God. A, a, a great had a great promising young career, you know, but just was derailed and, and, and murdered due to injuries, you know, mm-hmm. concussions to be more specific. And and that's what scares me about Jalen Phillips. He didn't play in 2019 at all. Yeah. Because he, he retired, but he came back for his 2020 season, and which Russo didn't play, ironically enough. And he had a phenomenal year. I'm not even going to lie. He lit it up. And had it not been for the concussion, he may be a top 15, top 10 overall prospect in his draft, period. Yeah. If he had a, two seasons like that back-to-back without those concussions. But the concussions scare me, man. He's a Ballard type of guy, though, size-wise. I yeah. think I wouldn't be surprised if I seen Ballard pull the trigger on him at pick number 21. Yeah, he's he's de- yeah, he's my number three, too. But it's 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 all for the same reasons, man. Concussions. So I was listening to the Colts brawl. I was listening to Destin talk. Uh, I think it was last week, and he was talking. They were they were talking about it too. And he brought up that he had, I think, his sister played soccer collegiately, and that she had had issues with concussions. And they, you're right, they don't go away. That's the scariest part, you know. Once and once you get them, you are so much more susceptible to continue to get them. Absolutely. And he, like you said, he retired, like a collegiate athlete retired because of that. Um, so that scares me. His athletic ability is off the charts. Um, I mean, I'm right with you on, I think of, of my ones that I really like, he's up there. I wouldn't hate none of these guys that we rank. I'm, I would hate if we picked, if no, Ballard went with it. I think maybe. he's a very likely possibility that he's going to slip. I think he'll be there at 21. Um, shoot, he could end up dropping to the second round depending on what his medicals look like. Yep. So, I mean, right. I'm with you. He's my number three. He worries me. Only the, the medical stuff, like you said, the medical stuff scares me because we saw that with, I mean, with Austin Colley, and you've seen it with other players too. And with Austin Colley, like you're talking 10 years, 10 plus years ago when all this was going on, and we didn't fully understand you know, CTE and the concussions and those lasting effects that they have. And I mean, we literally saw him scramble his brain, like completely promising, amazing chance to be just an outstanding receiver. And I mean, he couldn't, he, he couldn't, once he got the first one, it was just kind of like, it just kept happening and he couldn't stay on the field and you just felt for him. Yeah. And so, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's, that's why he's my three. The talent's all there. He's got all the talent in the world. Yeah. If it, it and the sad thing is too, is if it was like, if it was like a knee, or a shoulder, or you know, I mean neck, not necessarily because that scares me too. But like something yeah. like that, it wouldn't scare me as much. You know, shoot, we took Julian Blackman coming off of a torn up knee. You know, but that that does lead to what you said too. Ballard guy, Ballard's if Ballard does his homework. And he thinks he's good. He's not going to be afraid to pull the trigger on a player who has an injury history. No, he has done it in the past. And although this being different from anything that we have ever, you know, yeah. had to see Ballard encounter as far as you know, someone that we was targeting in a draft potentially. Yeah. So let's go number two, man. I, I said mine. Let's. Let, I'm gonna let you lead each one because I'm I'm interested. Like I, okay. I'm, I'm gonna let you do yours, and then I'm gonna see where we fall. Maybe I'll do some last minute changes if we're too much the same. <laughs> now my number two, I'm, I'm so high on this guy, man, and this is just me, probably. Well, he he should be in everyone's top five, so it's, it's not me going off the rails here. But I am higher on this guy than most people. I'm willing to admit that this guy, this last season, had a monster year. He had 12 and a half tackle for losses, nine and a half sacks. It's Aziz Ajilari from the University of Georgia. He's not even on my list. I love it. Six foot three, 240 pounds. That is probably his biggest weakness is his size. That's a big boy, man. Yeah, it's, you know, compared to Jalen Phillips, who's like, 266 or mm-hmm. something like that and, and my number one guy who, who's even like freaking terminator on his 40 time today yeah yeah 
Ajilari, man, I love his game. His last game of his college career, he had he had three sacks and two forced fumbles. He dominated. It was the best game of his college career, period. He's extremely productive at the University of Georgia, strictly a speed guy, great bend. But the, the only thing is he he lacks the power in the run game. He's, ne he's never going to be a, a great run defender. He may be decent, you know, substantial, but but he has the potential to be a high level pass pass rusher. When I say high level, I mean he can easily be a 13 or 15 sack type of guy. Like he has that type of potential if he's truly unlocked. So I, the University of Georgia, Aziz, Aziz, I think it's I think it's pronounced Aziz Ajilari. Man, see, okay, I, I want to clarify something too. Rashad watches way more tape than I do, okay? <laughs> His brother sends him a ton of tape, and he gets to watch, especially when it comes to the – y'all, we are so in his wheelhouse right now. I am right so my back screwed here, right. <laughs> as I try to do this one. He's got people off the board. My, mine's like chalk. Um, so – it was the same on number three, though. Our number three we was the were, same. We were. So. I, I think we're going to be different. We're definitely different on two. Mm -hmm. But I'm interested. Uh, man, now I'm super interested to see who your one is. Um, oh, I want to see your two, man. Who you got? So my two is Gregor Rousseau. Mm, higher yeah. than Jalen Phillips. Yeah. I mean, so I like him. I like his talent. I like, I like his him. speed. Now, let's, let's negate the 40 time. You know, his 40 time was ugly. Uh, what was it? it? was like, well, I don't have it in front of me. I can't remember it was, what it was. It was terrible. His was vertical like was terrible, too. I mean, he, he did not test well. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't. But can we just put out this? People who are fast in the 40, like like Henry Ruggs last year, or um, who, who's the one I'm thinking of? Oh, my boy, John Ross. You know, <laughs> they train for the 40. Like you don't, yeah, for sure. You're not. No one runs forty yards unimpeded in the NFL, right? It just, I mean, unless you're Tyreek Hill, you know, and you just right. <laughs> they just can't catch you and you're gone. Yeah. You know, no one gets to run forty yards unimpeded in the NFL. So I mean, they train for it. Y'all have heard me talk. Like I have, a, I have a sixteen year old nephew who plays high school football, and he's trying to get in like this club. You know, a shout out to my sixteen year old nephew, Hunter Burton. He says he's the best cornerback in the state of Tennessee. We will see in a few wow. years. That's what he thinks. He really thinks it. He's super pumped because uh, there's a podcast that I've been talking to that highlights high school athletes. And because of because of Colts Nation, because of our standing, they've agreed to actually let him come on in the fall and talk. Really? Um, that's awesome, man. So we're really proud of him. But I say all that, that they train like he's training right now to raise his 40 times, specifically for the 40. So, like, let's mm. – with Rousseau, you know – and it hurts me too. So I come from a Florida State family. I'm a Hoosier. Everyone knows that. But I come from a Florida State family. So, so to have two freaking hurricanes on my list does hurt me. But I'm gonna just I'm just gonna choose to believe Phil uh, Jalen Phillips was at UCLA this whole time, um, <laughs> and he never left the Bruins because I don't got a problem with them. But I think I think he Rousseau's gonna be in that spot too. He's gonna kind of be because he had such a horrendous pro day. Uh, I mean, such a horrendous one, but he's got the talent. He's got speed. Would, do I want him if he's sitting there? I, I, I want to know who else is on the board. Like my number one, if my number one is there, I'm good. Go ahead and pull the trigger. There's like one other, well, there's two, two other players that I would take in front of him, but we know who everyone knows who they are. I know, know both of them. Are. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's Bateman and it's Horn. Yeah. Um, so God willing, neither one is there. So I don't cry on the live stream that we'll probably do. Um, yeah. So, I mean, he's probably going to be there. Is he my first option? No. I mean, he's, but, you know, in, in, in all honesty, me and you have talked too. I don't know if I want to go. I wouldn't necessarily go edge in the first round anyway. Uh, I mm -hmm. think we've all, we've all kind of settled into the fact that Ballard's probably trading back to get mm -hmm. more picks anyway depending on who's there. I mean, we've all done our mock drafts. Shout out to Rashad. Rashad put hey. his out, which was fantastic mock draft too, you guys. Thank you. I appreciate so, it. So, I mean, we've all done them, mm -hmm. you know, and they're fun. And there's – I don't know about when you did yours. When I did mine, my one of my first ones, there's a ton of talent that still sits there at 21. It's, it's, so somebody it shocked falls me. every time. But – so, but yeah, he's my number two. He's nowhere near as off the wall as, as, as yours, but I love that. 
a, a quick point about Gregory Russo. I mean, he's not in my top three, but he's a talented guy. I mean, mm-hmm. up until he tested terribly, which yesterday wasn't a complete fail for him because his <laughs> measurable his measurables were still good. Like his, his height is man. legit. His weight is legit. His arm length is freaking. That's the big one, man. That's why yeah. he's number two. That 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 arm length. That is what. That's that's Ballard loves that stuff. He he, he has great strength. You know, I think the only thing the measurable. I mean, as far as the testing is gonna, people are gonna use that to wonder if he has that explosiveness. Yeah. You know, anytime you, you run a slow 40 time or your vertical's not that high or your three cone was like a 7.6, it was, it was they're going to worry bad, about man. No, you said, dude, it was shit. It yeah. was bad. But Brevin Jordan tested terribly too, and that made me sick to my stomach. Be careful now, man. Y'all be careful oh. now. Brevin Jordan's your boy, man. I, I love him to death. I've been and watching, t- I'll tell you what, man, I've been watching way more tape on him. I've been watching way more stuff on him are, since are, you brought him up. Are you coming on board? I, I think I'm, I mean, I'm good with it because with dude, it? the craziest off the wall thing I heard. So this is not to get off subject, but, it, but when you talk about like tight ends and come on board, someone mm-hmm. brought up I'm, when I was listening to Kevin Bowen, he was like, man, you know, there's one player in the draft. If he slipped and I'm like, who are they, who are they going to say? Like, I want to hear an off the wall. Kyle Pitts, Kyle Pitts is not slipping to anywhere that the Colts he can get did. him. I did hear that. I heard it. I heard it today. Matter of fact, it was on the episode that came out today. I- mm-hmm. It blew up. I mean, hey, man, if he slipped to 10 and Ballard wanted it, oh, I'd take it. I'd take it, but he's going. He might go before a receiver goes. It's possible. It's entirely possible, man. He may be the best player, non-quarterback in this draft. Oh, my God. Okay. Okay. Yeah, now you go. All right. Who's your number one, man? I I want – I'm very curious now. I'm very, very curious. My number one is a guy. He's six foot four. He's two hundred and seventy pounds. Uh, extremely productive guy. But this last season, he only played in four games. He had four tackle for losses and two sacks. It's Quee Pay, man. Quee Pay, talented guy. Extremely strong. Plays the run well. Speed to power. Good with his hands. Like I say, he just didn't play much this past mm-hmm. season, you know, for the University of Michigan, by the way, people inquiring mine. Um, yeah. He's really talented, though. Really talented guy. He may be the most polished rusher out of all these guys we name because a lot of these guys is raw. And that's what people don't like about this class is that mm-hmm. it's, it's no real day one guys who want to come yeah. in and make an instant impact. Because, you know, you know, Stephen, those day one guys that come in and make an instant impact, those guys are top five draft picks. Top yeah, it's three. Miles Garrett, it's Vaughn Miller. Yeah, yeah, Bosa. Yeah. <laughs> Clowny. Clowny's, <laughs> Clowny, who's still out there, by the way. The longer he stays out there and the longer we don't have a pass rusher, man, it scares me. I'm not worried. He's, you know what you know what he's going to do? He's going to wait till training camp again, come in overweight like he did last year, and then he's going he's gonna to get $16 million to set the edge. Right. Exactly, with no production. But oh, anyway, sorry. <laughs> Go hey back. man, I love I, I love Pay's game. I don't really have much of a deep dive. I think he's the most well-rounded in out of all of these guys. He's still young, still has a lot of upside. He's a guy I can see being a great edge setter, like Clowney, but mm-hmm. also giving you you know ten to twelve sacks. I don't I don't see him being like a fifteen lead the league type of sack guy, but I can see him being a consistent ten to thirteen sack type of guy. And plan to run really well. Yeah, he's so. Here's the funny thing: we disagree on several things, but that he's my number one. Yeah, he is. He's my number one. He he checks the boxes. If he's there at 21, I'm good. I, you can yeah, take, I take him. him. You take me. He's don't there at 21 about with my other two. I got issues. You know, oh. I don't know. I don't know who I go with. You have to go need Stephen. We have to go need. Well, we, we we do need JC Horn. <laughs> <laughs> we do need a corner. We, <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. I, I don't know. And, I, and it's all known void because I don't think Horn's there. I think Pay's probably going to be there. Horn moved up on my list, too. He's my he's my cornerback, too. Farley is fell. He, Farley dude, fell, he, yeah. he had a good pro day. Did you see him do the – what was it, the long – he looked like he floated in air. He looked – he literally liked he, – he's like a ghost, like like ghost, you know. He just – you know, it was, it was crazy to watch. And, and, Did you see and the PFF that- thing? What do you say? 
the oh the PFF they ranked their top five corners. JC Horn wasn't even in the top five. I did see that. I was disgusted. I was utterly disgusted. I didn't know what I was looking at. I couldn't even believe. I'm going to assume it was a mistake on their part. Yeah. They do say some stupid stuff sometimes. Yeah, he's my he's my cornerback too. Farley, uh, Farley's having back surgery, I think, again. He's this slipping. is the second time. He he he's really talented, but I don't trust that back, man. I don't trust that back. So it's that injury stuff. He I mean, he that that's probably, I mean, if I if I'm if I'm doing a dive into college football a little bit, Virginia Tech is definitely like that's that's like cornerback you, man. They produce some corners out of there. They do a good job. You know, they they put them in the NFL. So no, I mean, I, you said it all with Pay. I think he checks he checks all the boxes. Yeah, he does. You know, and, and I think with Edge. So let, let's let's talk a little bit about Edge too. I think we're staring very quickly though too at what everyone likes to joke with is it's it's, it's Banigou Ture season a little bit. Um, I'm not saying if y'all could see y'all go to the YouTube so you can see Rashad's face. He looks like I kicked his dog. Um, <laughs> that hurt but, my soul just now that hurt but, my soul well i mean you wonder uh, you know let's take into account a couple of things with it right let's take into account that that ballard talks repeatedly about the fact that it takes two to three years for for edge rushers to really come on unless you are that day one miles garrett guy absolutely you know and let's you know just because you're in the top 10 too bradley chubb hadn't been great um that's true and a lot of people wanted him instead of Quentin Nelson. Um, but, you know, I don't know. I mean, the, the issue I have, and Michael's going to kill me because Michael loves him some Ben Banigo because um, he's a TCU guy. But Teray's flashed. Teray has flashed. Yeah. And you do wonder how much that injury played into last year. I don't, I don't think hearing him talk after season two – I don't think he was ever fully healthy. And then you have now you have Banigou who is out linked at the hip with Buckner doing training at UNLV. I mean, I don't feel great going in with them too, but let's be honest too. Let's say it's those two. And let's say we do get this done and, and Houston comes back, right? So you have those two, you have Houston, and let's say you do take a pay. He's not day one. You know, we the boat has the boat has. I mean, if you guys are watching YouTube, the boat has sailed. It is gone. We're not getting an impact player in free agency. You can piss, you can moan, you can yell, you can scream, you can yell at us because definitely people have. Right. Um, it's not happening. It's like there's there's no one else out there really. There's good talent that's still out there on the free agent market that you could snack up, but there's not that come in ten sack. And let's be honest, too, we don't really know if any of these guys are going to give 10 sacks to wherever they're at. But Dupree's coming off a knee. You know, Aquara has flashed, but he's in Detroit. You know? <laughs> so I don't know. I mean, speaking of that, too, you know, we always go off the cuff. Did you see the picture of Jared Goff in his uniform? Yes. He looked dead in the eyes, man. He looked dead <laughs> in the eyes like, what the hell happened? This is not the beach anymore. <laughs> Like like there's a, there's literally a picture where it shows that it goes in on his eyes. And it's like, man, he looks dead in the eyes. He looked like he was thinking, how did I end up here? Like, like how did I get here? <laughs> He's blinking SOS. Get me out. Get me out. I, I feel so bad. I feel so bad. They, yeah. they were talking about him. They were like, man, he's he's a Cali boy. Grew up in Cali. Went to California. <laughs> went to LA. And now you are in Detroit, my man. You, <laughs> you are in the middle of nowhere. Sorry, that's tough, but man. so that's you know edge. Edge is it's tricky. I don't know if Ture. I mean, and if Ture comes in and he plays like he did flash, and he does that consistent, then you're good. But no one really knows, and I think you know we talked about it last week with free agency. There's a lot of really, for lack of a better word, there's a lot of really butt hurt people that they didn't do anything that he's not he's not doing anything, but. Like we, me and you talked one time, so you know the whole in Ballard we trust, right? He does, he makes the right choices. Nine times out of ten, he's made the right choice. So you kind of, if you're gonna say it, say it, you know, like you, like you say, say it with your chest, right? You know, and mean it, and don't just mean it when he does it. Does what you want. You trust right. him when he does what you right. don't want because he's got a plan. I mean, everyone wanted him. 
to do what the Niners have done and move all the way up. And he didn't. He, he doesn't do that either. So just chill, Colts Nation. You know, just. <sighs> yeah. I mean, you know, we have a tendency to overreact. We do. And I mean, I may even hit a group message, you know, amongst you, or, or I may text you individually and just be like, God damn it, I wish Bell to do something. You oh, know, yeah. but, if people could see inside our chat sometimes. Oh god. There's a there's oh, a lot, there's a lot of flame going around when things aren't happening. And that's yeah. uh, let's clarify too. We love the Colts. It's not just because we don't have shit to talk about when he doesn't do anything. I don't want to talk about Tevi and oh, Davenport. God. I want to talk about Aquara. And John U. Smith. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I can't. So I get to talk about Big Mo with his clown hands. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, we get to do fun things like that. So yeah. just, it's okay. But don't don't try to overreact. We're 30 days out now from the draft. You know? And also, calm. Calm, calm, calm. Because mm-hmm. don't get yourself wound up. Colts are, one, picking later. And two, probably not picking at all in the first round. They're right. probably going to trade out. So just just relax and watch like the craziness ensue with people who want to draft Mac Jones in the top five. So forty nine. Okay, man, I'm telling you what. Oh, let's let's. So they listen. So so I have talked with them again. You know, and Bama Brawl is going to come on. We're going to probably have them on. I'm going to say probably conservatively like maybe two weeks. I'm working on a guest for next week that I told Rashad about. Mm. Um, so we're probably going to have Bama Brawl on in two weeks, and I have had a lot a lot so much and Blake if you're listening I have so much fun with you man I really do you know I I've had the same tweet locked stocked and ready to rock that has a picture and everything ready to go since I listened to their last podcast because I'm not a Bama fan y'all know but Blake and Adam I'm super close with Adam you know so I listen to theirs every time and it is really informative too when it comes to some of the other players that the Colts could be targeting right um but I mean, it is what it is with Mac Jones. I don't know. I, I do think he's probably going top five now. That's I mean, I, insane. I, I, I think they traded up for him, man. I really – I don't know why. It smells of Trubisky trade up. Like, you could get him where you're at. Why are you coming up? But then you do hear these rumors that are out now. They're saying, like, a lot of execs are really high on him, you know. And then you hear the Niners, John Lynch and Shanahan are in Alabama today. And not at Ohio State watching Justin Fields. So is it smoke screams? Who the hell knows? This is crazy, man. Like, this is pure, so much fun. Utter so craziness. Fun. It's so much fun because it's all bullshit all the time. Right. Like you don't know what's happening. Right. Like McAfee talked about several weeks ago. He was he, he was so heartbroken because he was like, So is everything is everything we hear? Is it a lie? And it was like Michael Lombardi was like, Yeah, it's all shit. Like it's all bullshit. And he's like, man. He goes, it looks like you look like a person who just found out there was no Easter Bunny. Right, exactly. So it's like, golly. So, I mean, okay. So, so obviously, as we talk about Bama Brawl, you know, you guys know that it's March and college basketball is is here. Obviously, college basketball is here. March Madness is here. Y'all have heard me rant. My Hoosiers have a new coach. I am pumped. Don't talk to me. Don't yell at me. I'm all for it. Get the, away from me. Okay. <laughs> so right now, DraftKings is going to give you 100 to 1 odds on any game in the Sweet 16 all the way through the championship game. So, dude, you could bet on Gonzaga to win, who is the favorite, who before we jumped on here, I watched a little bit of that game, and that's a, that's an ass whooping. That's what was happening. To, I'm sorry, man. I'm, I, you know, sorry for your Trojans. But <laughs> you can jump on there. You can get 100 to 1 odds on any game you want. Pick it. You got to go. Just go to dkng.co slash brawl march. Again, that's dkng.co slash brawl march. There's no point. You might as well do it, dude. Put down 10 bucks. You get 101 odds on the guys who are favorite to win. We all love March Madness. We love our Colts, but we all have other things we love too. DraftKings, just do it, you guys. It's, it's just a fun. Who doesn't want to make money? Unless you live in Louisiana. That's right. You and that's the tie, and I always forget. I forgot. Y'all know too. It's in all the places that you did. It does apply. You guys know. If you listen by now, you know it is legal where I live. It is not legal where Rashad lives. So sorry, Rashad. Saved you a hundred. Saved you some money by not betting on the Trojans. 
That's okay. So, you guys, I love it, man. We're going. We're if I could play the music. Some this soft elevator music. It's social media sessions. Uh, so, social media sessions, you guys. And, you know, we try to get to these. We always try to get to them. We love them. It's tagged on the top of the Forged in Blue page on Twitter. It's, you know, we're always asking for questions. We get them throughout the week. It's on Facebook. It's on Twitter. It's, you can hit me in the comments on our YouTube page now, whatever you guys are thinking. Bleacher Report, I don't see it. Rashad sees it. He sticks it in. We try to get to him. When we have guests, it's a little more difficult. But, you know, we've been we've been going for about – I was so wrong last time on the time. Like, I, I noticed I said that. I was like, we got like 10 more minutes. And then I looked at – when I listened back, I was like, we talked for another 30 minutes. So – but we've been talking we, – you know, we got, we got time today. And so we're going to hit – we're going to hit several. We're going to hit as many as we can and keep it within that our sweet spot now is like that hour to hour and 10 minutes but okay so first sip sip snuck one in to rashad here at the end what are the chances of us drafting an edge with our first pick of the draft and which prospect would y'all love to fall to us rashad this is your boy go for it man sip what up man uh i think the possibility is high you know with the limited amount of edges that they have which is about We agreed about two or three that we're okay with taking in the first round. If one of those guys fall, I think it's a good chance Ballard goes there. Due to the depth at tackle, he can come back and and get another and get a tackle in the second round. That's a starter quality player. So I don't think, you know, he'll let his need for tackle stop him from getting, you know, an edge. Or even like you said, you know, if one of those premium players that you like fell. I think he has afforded himself the luxury to be able to go get, you know, a guy like J.C. Horn and then get Eichenberg, you know, in a second. Because there'll be tackles available in the second round. Like, he doesn't have that to fear. Yeah. I mean, I'm with you. I think if the right player is there, Mm -hmm. Valor will pull the trigger and he'll go edge. I mean, he tells you – and the thing, too, is, like, this is a need – that falls in his wheelhouse. He lets you know, like, he loves the lines. He freaking yeah, he loves the lines. Yes. O-line, D-line, trenches. That is his thing. Like, that's that's the the, the two the two O-linemen that we signed. People are bashing that. That's depth. Like, he saw what happened right. last year, and he attacked it, and he loves the lines. So, if the right player's there, well, I, I, think, I think it's a slam dunk. I think he will do it. I mean, my question always is, you know, here's a fun one for you. This is not in social media, but it's a little piggyback. So we all know that for the next pick is back. We love it as Colts fans. Teams don't do this, so we freaking love it. But we also know that they do a ton of behind-the-scenes stuff, right? So when Carson Wentz was introduced, they had the video – where he's out there and he's walking through the, the headquarters. He's out on West 56th. He's looking through the Hall of Fame stuff. He's seeing Reich. And obviously the big scuttle out of that was Reich was watching videotape. And the Colts let it let you see who he was watching, which was Cosme <laughs> from Texas. So the I question is, so. I, I feel like Ballard's too smart. That's got to be a smoke screen, <laughs> you know? It's, it's got to be a smoke is. screen because he could have learned that shit out. Like he, right. he, he's like, he, you know, he's the czar of Colts land, you know? So no, I'm with you though. When it comes to this, so if, I, I, if the right player's there, I, I definitely see him doing it. I don't think mm-hmm. it would even be a question. He'd pull the trigger. So great question, man. Great question. I love that it comes through Twitter now because, like I said that one time, Sip totally set up a Twitter account just to interact with us more and quicker. My boy, man. Okay, so Colts Brawl Elite. This is coming from our Colts Brawl Elite. As Rashad likes to do, like, alert, alert, alert. <laughs> I want to know about it. Hit me up at Stephen Burton 86 Go find at King of Colts. We'll talk about it. We'll get you in there. Yeah, we'll, You got to be a diehard. You got to bleed blue. We'll pull some strings. You know, there's rules. There's rules. We love our elite people. So there's rules to it. So this is our boy Mason, man. And let's give a shout out to Mason. Mason is now a writer for Colts Brawl. And he put his first piece out. 
Um, I'm pretty sure we all retweeted it. I know that yeah. right now, I think it's front page on our Facebook page too, yeah. where you can read it. It's a great article. Mason did a fantastic job. He's also the host of the Loser Lounge um, with our boy Ian. You know, I think I think they I think we might be going on there soon. I'm not entirely sure. I've talked to Mason a little bit about it, but uh, so he said he hit us up with a question. It's a great question. I like it. Um, how do the Colts balance the fat? <laughs> I didn't catch this. Okay. You, you commented on it. The fast four of Taylor, Mac, Hines, and Wilkins. So I'm going to say one thing with Mason. Wilkins ain't that fast. Man, um, not at all. But how do they balance it? So, one, I don't think Wilkins is back. Uh, I, I don't – there's just – there's just – there's not enough touches. Right. And you're so deep now because you have – Mac, you have Hines, and they all have their roles. Um, how do you balance it? I mean, everyone's heard me and you talk about the fact that, I mean, obviously Taylor demands, I think he demands 20, what, 20, 25 carries. Well, 15, yeah. 20, 15 yeah. to 20 carries. Give, yep, 15, 20. going to have it. And Hines needs, I would say, five to seven. Touches in general whether it's carries, catches, he's got to be involved. And then now you have Mac. And I think that I think it does make it a little easier with Mac coming off of the Achilles. You he's not going to get the lion's share. He is he's going to have to kind of be eased in. But I mean, if you're if you're divvying it out, if I'm looking at it like a pie chart, then yes, let's sit down we're in math class at Forged in Blue. Let's get a pie chart. Forged You've got the math. pie. Forged in math, baby. So um, it threw me off. Uh, so, so you're looking at this pie chart. I, I would, I mean, you're looking 70% of the stuff, 70% of the carries, I think are going to go to Taylor. I mean, and you can tell me if I'm wrong. 20%, I think are going to go to Hines. And I think you're going to 15 to 20 to Hines. And I think you're going to go, you know, the rest is going to be Mac. Right. Um, he's going to kind of relieve a little. He's going to, he's going to, my opinion, and I don't know if the Colts will do this, is he's going to play that Jordan Wilkins role, role is what I think. But they think so highly of him. I don't know if that's where they're going to put him at. But I mean, you agree? Forged in, forged in math, baby. You think that pie chart looks okay? I think I should go on YouTube because if, if I'm doing hand shapes, I got yeah, the pie. Yeah, he, he's doing all kind of hand signals. I thought he was throwing up gang signs. I got scared for a second. No, oh, man, but, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just think, waving at this point. You're gonna get me. YouTube's gonna flag me. <laughs> I think we could uh 70, you said 70%. That that sounds about right. Maybe 65, you know, a go to Jonathan Taylor, because what you want to have him is fresh, you know, going into the playoffs and down the stretch of the season. And Marlon Mack's biggest benefit, as far as the most important reason he is back, I think from the coach's point of view, is that. If something happens to Jonathan Taylor, you can slide Mac in and keep Hines at his same role. Yeah. That was so important. It, as far as in the past, you remember when Jonathan Taylor got benched? Do you remember Jordan Wilkins got the start you know, last season? And, you know, let's be honest here. Jordan Wilkins is, may not touch the ball. If these three guys stay healthy, Jordan, Jordan Wilkins maybe won't yeah. get a carry. You know, it, it, he it's is what of, he is. You know, he's he is a fabulous four. He's not a starter. It? What do you call it? A fast four? A fast four. I liked it though. I did no. like it. I like the creativity, Mason. <laughs> it's like a terrific three. Okay. You know, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. that's really what it is. <laughs> Those three guys are gonna get the ball and, and you gotta find creative ways to do it. I think Jonathan Taylor is gonna be your bell cow, but you don't want to run him in the ground. When you see him approaching 25 to 30 carries, that's that's dangerous territory for him, you know, over a consistent amount of base. Now, he can do it because he's proven he can do it, but you don't want him doing it, especially when you have a guy as capable as Marlon Mack, who's already proven to be a stud. And I think getting him a few touches will, will help him bounce back you want to work him in slowly, freshly off that Achilles and, and have him in his best possible shape going into next offseason. So so you can do right by him and, and he can go get paid because he deserved to get paid. And he, yeah. he just had an unfortunate situation this past season. And hopefully you want 
Marlon Mack at his best this season so he can eventually get rewarded. Yeah, and I, and I love – I think the best point you made is the point about fresh. JT was so fresh at the end of the year. That's why he came on the way he – I mean, that and learning the game. But he was so fresh. I mean, that he was just – he was popping off the field. So, I mean, I, that that's a great point. So, okay. So, next up – we're going to boy kitchen. We're working through all his questions. Kitchen seeds at the time. Um, so I, I like it. I think it's just it's very point blank. It's very straight to the point. It's very what do you think? Um, how likely do do we see us drafting a player at twenty one? Do we actually think we're going to draft a player at twenty one? If I had to put a percentage on it right now, I'm seventy thirty. Seventy, we won't draft a player at twenty one. Thirty percent. In case one of those studs we referred to earlier fall to that spot and mm -hmm. it's just too good for Ballard to pass up, I'm going to give that a 30% chance. And there's a handful of players, you know, like somebody like Darius, not not even Darius, so maybe like Slater. Slater, the offensive tackle from Northwestern. Ooh, he dropped. Yeah, Bateman, uh, J.C. Horn, of course. Like, you say it so much, oh, J.C. Horn. Because he's a no-brainer at 21. If he really is. Yeah, if he's, he's at no 21 and we don't draft him, I'm going to cry. If he gets to 18 or 19 and Ballard doesn't jump up two spots to grab him, I'm going to cry. Him. I'm going to Everyone's going to see me cry on a live stream. I'm going to cry. Yeah. I'm going to throw my Forged laptop. in tears. I'm going to throw my laptop. And I just got it yesterday. So no, don't, do that. don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. That's how upset I'm going to be. <laughs> For those who listen, though, to this, like we were joking around. Like we've pretty well established that we don't think they're going to take any player at 21. Right. Like okay, a few episodes back, the deal is off the table, you guys. Rashad did put money that they were going to trade back. Yeah. He actually had people reach out to him about that. But that yeah. deal is off the table. We all think <laughs> it. So we're just kind of having fun with it because it is a good question. And we do thank right. you, Kitchen. And, I, and I, I'm going to reiterate previously, as I did, and kind of throughout this, find us on here. You know, find me at Stephen Burton 86, Rashad's at King of Colts. You can go find at Forged in Blue. Send the questions, interact. Okay. If you follow the pod, follow us. Yep. That's a big thing. You know, that's how you're going to, because the pod, the pod page doesn't post nearly as much as we do. So exactly. Do those things, get these questions in, and, and we'll do our best to answer them. Okay. So next up, we got another one. We got DJ, man. DJ's back. Um, so, Oh, man, I'm trying to see. He he's got he's got several. And I want to pick which one I like the most. Okay, take your time. I will entertain the people while you cipher through that. Yeah, he's he, Rashad's gonna Rashad's gonna sing for you. <clears throat> Y'all ready out there? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. Thank you, Steven. I'm, I'm trying. I'm I'm here to help, man. <laughs> um, can Will Holden be a starting left tackle for us if we prioritize pass rush and corner in the draft? Absolutely Please. cannot. <laughs> <laughs> that was so quick. I didn't even get to lean back in my chair. You're like, no, he cannot. Nah, man. I, I think um, <laughs> I, 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 fussed with, I, I had a fight with Devin. I said Devin. Destin about this. Uh, maybe last week when, when the coach was first interested in Tevi, we had a debate. He was telling me Tevi was better than Will Holden. I, I, I don't think that, by the way. Will Holden actually looked pretty solid in that Pittsburgh game that he came in and played. He, he, he How many looked, sacks did he give up that game? You're going to say solid. How many sacks did he give up? I don't know. I don't know. How many I don't sacks think, was it? It was like we gave up no. 19 for the year, and I think 10 came in the Steelers game. No, man, don't do that. <laughs> it was bad, man. It was bad. <laughs> Phillip, Rivers, Phillip Rivers retired because of the Steelers game. Yeah, he probably did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He I got don't know. Right no, I, but I'm with you. <laughs> Keep going. Holden, Keep going. I don't think it was Holden, though. I don't think it was Holden. It was, I dude, it was probably – it wasn't LaRaven Clark because he was hurt, too. Was it Chaz? I think it was Chaz Green. It was. He didn't play horrible. I mean, left tackle is going to be a spot. You're going to have to – depending on who you take, you know, if you take them high, if you take Cosme or Slater drops, that's great. But I think – I think left tackle is one that's going to be makeshift this year more than anything. And I think it's okay. We've got a more mobile quarterback, obviously. It's going to be really interesting to see. We'll hold and play 83 snaps 
He had two penalties, no sacks allowed last year. So he was not the culprit for yeah. T.J. Watt committing homicide. I think it was Chaz Green, though. That's what I really think it was. There's a bolo out for Chaz Green for letting <laughs> T.J. Watt kill Phillip Rivers that game. So, okay, so, D.J., great question, man. Um, okay, so next up, we've got our boy Aiden. We love Aiden. And he has a very point-blank question, too, man. What is our opinion of the Colts' free agency approach? And Rashad just threw his keyboard. Not just <laughs> Mentally, I did. Son of a – I'm telling – so, man, we – just because we talk about the Colts and we jump on here with you guys, you know, every week, doesn't mean we're immune to being pissed off. Right. I mean, no one was happy. No one was happy that – no one's really happy that it feels like he's just kind of – it's 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 an incomplete – is what it right. is. Is what it feels like. It feels like, it, you know. And who was it? I'm trying to remember. Someone talked about team run it back. And the only other thing too is like you do talk about team run it back, and they're bringing the same players back. But all these players, the Colts are so young. Mm-hmm. They're all a year older. They're all a year more experienced. They're not going to be the same players they were last year anyway. Maybe. I mean, maybe. But I mean, it. No. I mean, as as as. I mean, I, I won't speak for Rashad, but for me, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's it sucks as, as a content person, as a podcast, to not have jack shit to talk about because right. we're not signing anybody. <laughs> but he gets the benefit of the doubt. So, right. I mean, I love you guys. I love the brawlers. I love the forgers, as I'm calling them now. But sit down. Like, he gets paid lots and lots of money. So, he gets my benefit of the doubt. Then, well. I mean, my process is pretty much the same every year. I see all these big, big name guys in free agency. I just, I think, you know, well, this will be the year. This year will be different. And it doesn't change. And I'm pissed. And then a couple of weeks later, I'm okay with it because Ballard gets paid a lot of money and knows a lot more about the game than football than me. Now, I, I study the game on my own. So, therefore, I have my opinions. And it's okay to criticize Ballard. It's okay to criticize him. But what you can't do is be upset just because he didn't do, like Steven said earlier, what you wanted him to do. Yeah. You know, it's not like, now if we come back into next season and Teray and Banagu don't do jack shit, then we have a right to criticize Ballard on not mm-hmm. doing anything. But at the same anything. time, if that happens, you got to think with you got to be on the same page with me with this. That if that happens, he's going to correct it then. Like he like he's given them their chance. They're both right. in year. They're, you know, Teresa in year three, Banigou's in year what year three. Yeah. So I mean, he would have given them their chances, and he will he will correct it at that point. But I'm with you, like. Oh God, Lord have mercy if they don't show up and show out this year. Exactly. Because they're gonna they're gonna Colts Nation will lose their ever loving mind. And, and all I want to say is before we get to the let uh what well, the next question, just let the process play out first before you so quick to criticize Ballard and, and judge him and say he failed. Just let it play out and see. Because mm-hmm. maybe he sees something that we don't. I give him benefit of the doubt he's earned that much at least. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm i in agreement with you. Give him the benefit of the doubt. So, okay. I got a couple more I want to hit on. We got we to do our boy Vinny. Vinny's, Vinny phrases it, but it's not really a question. And I'm sure I'll hear from Vinny as soon as he listens to this tomorrow up in the Great White North. Um, so, he, he shot us over his – really, I think his question is more of what we think of his mock draft. He did a three-round mock draft. What do you got? Um, he's got – He's got us moving back out of the first round and getting an additional third and fifth. He's okay. got us taking Newsom in round two, round one. So I don't know what, what is he doing. How Wait, he in doing round this? one? He he's got us moving back, but he's got us taking Newsom in round one. Okay, mm-hmm. Vinny, man, I love you, but I'm 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 confused. So let's maybe let's, he took our second round pick and moved. Back. Moved up. Okay, we'll 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 go with that. We'll go with yeah. that. So he moved back up. He got Newsom. And then he's got Cosme and he's got Rondell Moore. Those are his first three picks. I love the picks. I don't think we get all three. It's no way. <laughs> I mean, that's that's like, man. V- Vinny, if we did that, they would throw a parade for Chris Ballard. Rub your lamp. Get in your downtown, lucky foot. 
Holy That's shit. How Indianapolis, West 54, they would throw a parade for Chris Ballard. Holy God. Can you if imagine you get that. those three players? And I love it. I mean, I we don't do a ton of mock drafts. Mock drafts are finicky and they're yeah. tough and people can tear them apart all they want. Right. But I like it. Dude, man, Vinny, if that happens, I'm going to fly you from Canada down here. Yeah. And you can come to West 56th Street. We'll all go meet up there at Laura's <laughs> party. And we'll, exactly. uh, we'll we'll discuss the, the players. Because, yeah, I mean, I, of sure. the three, I will say I love all three players. I Me love too. all three. Me too. Um, I don't know if I like Rondell Moore in the third round. I'm not sure I have him. Okay. I mean, he's super explosive. I don't know where I would put him on my list, on my, on my rankings for wideouts. And shout out – Pretty sure we're going to do that next week. Yeah. Um, but, man, no, I love the picks. I love I the just, picks, too. It's kind of like being like, man, we're going to get J.C. Horn. Then we're going to – second round, we're going to get <laughs> – I, I, I don't even know, man. J.C. Horn and – Rashad Bateman in the first round, J.C. Horn in the second. And Brevin Jordan in the third. And Brevin Jordan in the third. I mean, so it's like, man, I, I don't know. I mean, shoot, that'd be scary yeah, right folks. there. Super Look Bowl. out, guys. Oh, uh, I do love it though, Vinny. Man, we love you. Uh, we'll hear from Vinny tomorrow. Appreciate so, I mean, it, Vinny. Yeah, I'll talk to you tomorrow for sure. I mean, as soon as he listens, God love it. You know, and he thanks us every week for the he, he's so personable. He thanks us every week for the shout outs. Okay. So let's let's do this one, and then I want to do something with, with the Facebook stuff. So because we've got probably about 10 more minutes that we're gonna go. So this is from our boy Scotty Occult's guy inside the elite chat. Shout out the elite chat. Uh, shout out to Zach. Shout out to Austin. I'm trying to think Coach Caveman. I'm trying to think of a whole bunch. They're of all people. in there, man. Ian, yeah, man. Mason, Ian, yeah, Mason, Nathan, Nathan. And then, you know, we always give a shout out to our Colts brawl girls, Heidi. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Who's you, your mama? You Ali. Who's your mama? Ali. JJ. JJ's fantastic. We always give shout outs. If y'all want to get a shout out, man, jump in there, man. Ask us about it. We'll get you guys in there. It's a fun little thing. It's a family you never knew you needed, but you really want to have. It's the Colts Brawl Elite. <laughs> Absolutely. CBE. So, uh, so Scotty Colts guy asked, with Ursay being the guy to push Ballard to get the TY deal done, and with a lack of legit moves for left tackle and edge and free agency, are y'all worried that Ballard's penny pinching is going to cost us the Super Bowl? So that's a, that's a, that's good, a good question. question. A good question. I, to be well, honest, I, I don't know if I would put us as a Super Bowl favorite anyway. Right. So I don't think I don't think one or two moves pushes there. I think I think we're division. You know, we talked about it last week. You know, be the man. You got to beat the man. Mm-hmm. You know, so you got to you got to beat Tennessee, and you got to beat that behemoth doing freaking push ups on rubber bands, looking like freaking Hulk. I know you saw it, Colts Nation. I know you saw it. Don't yeah, lie. Right. I know you saw him doing push ups on rubber bands on a ball with a fifty pound chain, looking like Mister T. Yeah. God, it's scary stuff, dude. Like that I, is scary. Dominique Foxworth was on Get Up talking about it and said, I'm glad I'm not still playing because I don't want him stiff arming me. And then they immediately show the video of Josh Norman getting thrown to you know Mars. That's but, scary, man. So, That's a scary guy. No, I don't think I don't think it does. Um, and I also want to debunk too the idea that I mean, if Ursay wanted to add sweetener, like we talked about earlier, and Ballard didn't, it wasn't happening. Like Ballard right. has final say when it comes to personnel decisions. He was okay with it. He wanted TY back. He wanted him at his number. And Ursay said, no, go ahead and do it. And he said, okay. So there's not some rift in the Colts front office. Uh yeah. One thing um this free agency has taught me, and, and it kind of goes hand in hand with the questioning as far as the Super Bowl part. And Ballard made this statement um on the docket show immediately after the season. This team window is just opening now i'm not saying that i'm not saying you're saying that that's what ballard is saying that's how he feels about the team that's how he views the team as the window is just getting open which which makes me feel like okay that's why maybe he didn't go out in free agency and spend big because 
he doesn't feel like the pressure that everybody else around is putting on him right now to get this mm-hmm. done right now. He doesn't see this as a right now, we got to do it type of thing. That's a great point because he said they're not. He he came out at the end of the year and said he did not think exactly. they would win now. Right. They were several pieces think, short. He said he didn't think we was one player away. He said that. He said mm-hmm. one or two players away. He, he wants to continue to build. And he's always built through the draft. I think he will fine tune through free agency once he has the roster completely built. He's still building right now. And, mm-hmm. and I really just had this epiphany doing this show. I just started thinking about, you know, some of the things, some of the interviews and Ballard tells you really what his plans are. If you really just listen, you know, you have to really step back, take your emotions out of it, take what you want out of it and just listen to the guy. The guy's very mm-hmm. open. The guy's very honest. And he tells you what his plan is. We're not, one per- We're not one person away. We're not, you know, our window is just opening. We have a very young team. I like what we have. We're going to continue to build this thing. And oh, once yeah. we get it built, then we'll, you know, we'll go out and get the guy, a guy here, a guy there that we feel like puts us over the well, top. Well, think about what he said last year, too. You know, when you when you point that out, it's a great point. You know, he's like, hey, y'all like the receivers. I'm obsessed with the trenches. What does he do? Transfer defo. You know, he goes and he gets Buckner. You know, everyone's telling him you can't draft a guard in the top five. He takes Quentin Nelson, who three years in, he is a Uh, surefire first ballot Hall of Famer. Best guard in the league, hands down. He's going to arguably be the greatest guard of all time. Yeah. I mean, so Ballard tells you what he's going to do. You just have to kind of listen. Right. So, I mean, he's just not. Like, you know, he did. It wasn't necessarily Ballard, but you know Ballard was kind of speaking through Ursa in that press conference about what they were looking for at quarterback, and that was Carson Wentz. He met the, you know, long-term plus short-term. So he tells you exactly what what he's going to do, you know. So, yes, I agree, man. I agree. You have my agreement. So, okay. So I'm – we're we're, going to kind of go off – that's the last question we're going to do because I want to talk about the crazy people inside Colts Facebook because they're just full of crazy of nuts. And when we're talking about our nuts, we're talking about manscaped.com. Y'all know I love it. It's my favorite thing to do. Okay, so manscaped.com. You got to take care of your boys. We talk about it all the time. You want it to look pristine. We're in March Madness. Your bracket's busted. Everybody's bracket is busted except for mine. I'm winning two pools. Thank you very much. Hmm. Yeah, not not that great though, man. Four, four, you know, I got four out of eight, but not that great. So your back is your bracket's not perfect, but you know what should be perfect? <laughs> your ball hair. Okay. Head to toe, trim it up. Y'all know too, you get the lawnmower, you get the lawnmower 3.0, you get the disposable mats, you get the boxers, you get all this great stuff that comes with it. The lawnmower has a headlight, so you don't, like I say every time, deflate your balls. And here's the coolest thing, you guys. Okay, so. Rashad, you joke all the time that your mom loves these ad reads because they're hilarious. And they are, you know, everyone likes doing them. I enjoy doing them. But here's the really, here's the really cool thing, you guys. It's fun. It's cool. But Manscaped is also now committed to raising awareness for testicular cancer. Um, they have paired with, I'm trying to make sure that I do it right, Alex Caruso, with the Testicular Cancer Society to bring awareness to testicular cancer, men's health, and early cancer detection. Because if you're down there cleaning your nads, you're going to notice if something's not right. So it's really cool. It's a great thing. We joke about Manscaped. It's a fun ad read. It's fun every week, but they are pairing with something that's really cool now too. Mm -hmm. So you want to take advantage of this, you get 20% off. Go to manscaped.com. As always, it's code BRA, that's B-R-A-W, L, code brawl okay so the crazy nuts that are facebook i got a lot of questions from facebook and we're going to attack them next week because they're so strange god love you guys colts nation true colts fan bleed blue nation i'm in all these ones rashad has been very scared don't let him fool you it is a frightening place when you venture into colts facebook um it is it's a little scary 
I don't venture in there too often. It's like um, it's like going into the Shark Tank in <laughs> Jaws. You just don't know what's going to happen. Like I, I, I told Rashad, I posted, what would you ask Ballard and them? And I'm not going to tell you all the responses because they're freaking crazy. Um, but I did get a, I did actually get several really interesting questions that we're going to attack next time um, because they are good. You know, you guys do have really good questions. You just kind of have to filter through a little bit of the mud and the gunk and the guck um, yeah. to get through them. So if you're on Facebook, you can find me going into those groups. You can also find we have a Forged in Blue Facebook page. Go over like that. Follow that. That's where we post the episodes. That's where we put Mason's article, other brawl articles that are going up. We'll put those there, too. You can easily get over to Twitter. You can find us at Forged in Blue is one. Stephen Burton 86 is the other. King of Colts is the other. You can get all of us. Follow one. Follow all. Come on right. now. Right. If you follow one, follow all, and then jump over and, you know, follow our boys over at Colts Brawl too. For sure. You know, shout out to them. We love everybody. It's always fun. We love social media sessions, you guys. We love it. You know, there's a reason why we rebranded it. There's a reason why we make a point, even on interview days, that we get to at least a handful of questions. Because as Rashad says, what are we, Rashad? A vibe for the people, man. Amen. It's in my signature now. It's hashtag yes, pop for the people. It's what we do, man. Rashad, you, know, you got to go check out YouTube, man. Yeah, <laughs> you, you got you to watch this. You got to watch it. So we, we joked beforehand. I love the fact we're on YouTube now because it makes it it makes it makes so much fun for us, too. And when we have guests like Laura last week, who Laura just had a blast with it, and I actually was texting with her before we got into the show. Um, so, you know, it's just fun. It's all fun, you know? Yeah. So – it's important to remember you guys too. You can find us in everywhere you listen to your podcast, right? You can find us on YouTube. We're going to kind of pump that a little bit more. Like we said, you can find us on Instagram for all the cool graphics that we put up. You can yeah. find us both on Twitter. You can listen on Apple, Audible, iHeartRadio. There's like, dude, man, I don't even Spotify. tell you that. Spotify. Yes. God loves Spotify. But there's like platforms I've never even heard of that people are listening to us on. So shout out to y'all. Keep doing that. I don't know where it's coming from, where we, you know, we picked up a few more in Finland. You know, it's fantastic. Um, the Finland Colts, man. We got, we got a decent following in the great white north, too. Um, really? Yeah. I mean, we got we got some up there in Canada, you know. So, I mean, I'll, I'll take it all day, all, all day. Um, so kind of a laying out for you guys, too. We're working on several cool interviews. We were, we're going to have Bama Brawl come on. Um, they're going to try to sell me on Mac Jones. It's not going to work. Doughy. Doe boy. Blake, man, I know you, you've, you've made it this far in the episode. I've got my tweet ready. Just come Pils on. Pillsbury. And by the way, Bama lost in the Sweet 16. E. Was that harsh? My Hidden team didn't even make it. Hidden below the belt. I was, dude, I had him in the final four, man. I was rooting for him. Oh, you had um, him in the final four? I did. Uh -huh. I did. I was stupid. Yes. I live in Tennessee. I didn't have them going far, but I had them going further than they went. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it is what it is. The bracket's always fun, man. Yeah, it is. But <laughs> so, so find us in all these areas. Also, you guys, it's so important that you guys rate, review, subscribe, and share. Rashad, tell them how to do that, man. All you have to do, there's three little buttons. That's right. Ain't that right, Stephen? Three little buttons. One, two, it is. three little buttons. You click it. You can rate. You can write a little review. Something nice. And that helps, that helps people discover us, though. Seri on a serious note, that helps pe us get in the algorithms a little more, you know, and, and people start to see this thing and allow this thing to grow. And... If you're a true, you know, supporter of us, we like, you know, to, to grow this thing out as big as possible, especially this off season with football coming back, with the announcement being made that we that they want to have fans 100% capacity this upcoming season. Just go ahead and do the right thing, man. Share this thing, click on this thing, rate this thing, and just. Tell a friend, each one teach one, and hopefully we reach some. 
And Amen. that's what I'm going to leave this with. Amen. I mean, and just so y'all know, like, it doesn't take long to write a review. Like we got, I tell you guys all the time, I'm, I'm going to, I want to do something that I don't normally do. I'm going to, and it's probably like, it's like, oh, that's like not what you do on a podcast. But I mean, we got hit with a five-star rating and got this fantastic review from stolen 16 where literally he was like love this show these guys keep up on the current situations all cults they have great stats stories guests and opinions you want cults information and to stay in the game you come to this show for it thanks guys for everything you do make this show to make this show happen doesn't go unnoticed bleed blue baby hashtag cults nation hashtag forged in blue that's the kind of shit that we love to see that, like, it gives was, me goosebumps, that was amazing man. goosebumps that was amazing I mean, you love that. I mean, and and I want to make sure I don't I don't ever want to leave out our number one fan, which is Vinny. Vinny can't for some reason. I don't know if it's a Canadian thing. He he can't get his reviews to post, but he he says the nicest things, man. When he sends oh man, DMs. Vinny's awesome, man. I mean, like, Vinny thanked Vin- us for for producing the show during the pandemic, and yeah. Zoom makes it easy. <laughs> you know? Right. It right. keeps everybody <laughs> sane. But like Rashad said, do do what he said. Just do what he said. Tell one friend. Reach one. Teach one. Do the yep. thing, man. That's it, it lets us get out there. We get more people involved. We get a further reach. We get, we just, we're able to do more. So like we say all the time, it's been super slow. I mean, like real slow. So just take a breath. Okay. I had somebody, I put a thought, I do my good morning all the time. And I had someone reach out to me and say, God bless. I wish I should. I had the patience <laughs> that Stephen has when it comes to this stuff, but you got to you guys, because you just have to realize it's only April. Okay. It's almost April. It's almost April, but it's only April. Rashad's doing like some namaste stuff, man. So it's only April breathe deep, relax. And remember that win, lose or draw, we are all forged in blue. I love you. Rashad loves you. We're out. Peace.